to It's a Woman's World, where we'll meet achieving women making a difference in our community. I'm Carolyn Bruner. Our guest is Julie Kent, former prima ballerina at American Ballet Theater and newly appointed artistic director for the Washington Ballet. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. It's great to have you here. It's a pleasure. And I was saying that we uh, met at Capitol Speakers Club, mm -hmm. where you spoke about returning to the Maryland area because yes. you're from here originally. Yes, I am. And you're newly appointed uh, prima, ba prima ba um, artistic director for the Washington Ballet. Always a prima ballerina, I think, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. I'd like to think so. <laughs> So um, uh, there were, when you spoke, I was so impressed. There were three things particularly that you said you wanted to do with the ballet. Mm -hmm. And uh, one was raising it to international status mm -hmm. and uh, developing the dancers to their full potential. Mm -hmm. uh, and these, um, you talked about uh, your love and respect for the ballet. And I just so admired Thank you. your respect for its purity and its artistry. It, it really, it touched me, and I just loved it. So it was I'm wonderful so to hear you speak. You. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. So we'll start with your experiences as a ballerina. Sure. Okay. Um, you began your career here at uh, Academy of Maryland Youth Ballet. Yes. And um, But how did you begin? And I kind of want to know the steps and how it all started. Right, sure. Yeah. So um, my mother studied ballet in her native New Zealand. Oh. And uh, my grandparents, uh, on their first date, went to the Theatre Royal in Christchurch, New Zealand, and saw the ballet. And my grandmother said, if I ever have a daughter, she's going to take ballet lessons. So my mother did, and she loved it. And uh, she uh, continued her studies in Sydney. Um, but she found the beaches of Bondi more interesting than the ballet studio, and she abandoned her uh, hopes to pursue a career in dance, and she became a flight attendant. Um, uh, back in the day when uh, they were really just the beauty queens, and um, <laughs> uh, I don't think uh, it's all very amusing to me that my mother was a flight attendant because she's really afraid of flying. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my father was a scientist uh, uh, stationed in Antarctica, mm -hmm. and uh, they met and were married. And my my father brought my mother back to the United States. They lived in. North Carolina, they lived in Atlanta, Georgia, and then my father was finally um, transferred to Washington, D.C. area, to Rockville, and that's where I was born and raised at, uh, I was born at the Bethesda Naval Hospital, and I was raised in the Potomac area, uh, attended local schools, um, but the, Churchill High School, uh -huh, yeah. and, you're, and yeah. I, I started ballet. I mean, I was always in the uh, ballet studio. My mother brought me with me oh. with her mm -hmm. when she studied ballet as an adult. Um, she asked a neighbor for a, a, a ballet studio, and the neighbor recommended the Maryland Youth Ballet. Oh. So she went for adult classes. The same name, neighbor ended up taking me to uh, my audition for Bershnikov at, at ABT oh uh, my goodness. 16 years later. And um, so the Maryland Youth Ballet was just always a part of my childhood, and uh, my dance was always a part of my life. Yeah. It was not a discovery. It was just always there. Mm. It, it sounds like um, it was a part of your family's life, yes, actually. It was. Yes, yeah, it I'm was saying. very much a family activity. Mm -hmm. My sister studied dance. My mother became a teacher. Mm -hmm. She was a teacher in this area for over 35 years. And oh. I so now that I'm back here, I, I people come to me all the time and say, oh, your mother was my first ballet teacher. Oh. And um, yes. she uh, has uh, lovely, yeah, made it? a big contribution. Mm -hmm. She also found founded the Music in Motion program at Maryland Youth Ballet, which provides uh, ballet uh, and dance to children with disabilities. Um, oh, so my one of my nieces has cerebral palsy, and she wanted all of her granddaughters to have the opportunity to study dance. So mm -hmm. along with the um, therapist, uh, they work together to form this program that's at the Maryland Youth Ballet. Oh. That's so amazingly yeah. wonderful. Isn't yes. It? Yes, it really ah. is, yeah. And then from the Maryland Youth Ballet, uh, you went to, the, it was the Summer uh, American Ballet Theater right. 2 uh -huh. uh, for um, a summer school. 
And uh, then is that where, yes, you were an apprentice, and then at age 16, join? Right. Or? So summer programs are a wonderful way for dancers to get a broader experience. You, you get exposed to different teachers and also to, you get an, an idea of where you lie in a group of dancers your own age from all over the country and all over the world. So it's a very important part of the, of the the process, mm -hmm. and you're also exposed to, uh, in attending um, summer programs, both at School of American Ballet and American Ballet Theater, I was exposed to people uh, in those companies, New York yeah. City Ballet and mm -hmm. American Ballet Theater. And uh, then uh, just, I progressed and was invited to audition for the company and then was given an apprentice contract. Mm -hmm. So. And that was when I was, uh, I had just turned 16, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And that was, at that time, um, Mikhail Breshnikov yes. was artistic director That's for right. American Ballet. Mm -hmm. So what was it like working with him at that time? It was time? extraordinary, so yes. yes. It made a great impression on me. I mean, he was my mentor director for five years between the ages of 16 and 20 before he left the company in mm -hmm. 1990. Um, and he made a, uh, was very formative in, in his, uh, his approach, his artistic pursuit, his emphasis on the art, um, his integrity was a, a big influence on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful and mm -hmm. exciting. And now that you're an artistic director, right. you have yes. these memories and yes. you know what was done that you might like to emulate? And, yeah. Yes, I mean, I think um, I, in my career at American Ballet Theater over the 30 years I was there, I was uh, immersed in an environment where I felt every person that I worked with and came across and that taught me a ballet or <coughs> coached me in a role, every single one of them gave me everything they could think of to help me be a better dancer and to fulfill my potential. And so that's my overall mission as a director is to create that mm -hmm. kind of environment where you allow the dancers to really have the opportunity to achieve and possibly surpass their potential. And uh, by giving them everything you can think of and, uh, and bringing in people that you also know can help them develop their mm -hmm. talent mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, progress and mm -hmm. just uh, dance beyond their own expectations. Yeah. So, Give us a couple of highlights of, of uh, your career mm. at ABT. Well, I've had, a, uh, you know, an extraordinary career. I, I, I never would have dreamt uh, as a 16-year-old in Maryland that I would have danced all over the world as a guest yeah. of so many ballet companies and danced with so many extraordinary people, yes. um, the greatest dancers of of the 20th century and 21st century and worked with these extraordinary choreographers. Um, dancing Giselle at the Marinsky uh, Theater was a, an incredible highlight. Oh, that's um, in St. Petersburg. Yes, yes. and we, our first program this season will be the Russian Masters program um, at the Kennedy Center October 4th through 8th and it's, so it's a wonderful uh, opportunity for us to celebrate um, the uh, contribution to our art form and world culture by four very important Russian choreographers. Mm -hmm. So being an American and dancing on a stage that Anna Pavlova danced and Balanchine grew up and yes. um, to take to represent my country and my art form and all, everyone that had invested in me on that stage was a great honor. I've received many um, awards that uh, uh, I'm the only American to have received, so that's very, um, again, a great honor. And uh, mainly, just the the people that I've worked with have been oh, that, that the was greatest. My, my gift. next question for you was to tell us the names of some of your mentors and the wonderful people who you worked with. Right. And well, yes. uh, Barishnikov clearly was my first very important mentor. Um, Georgina Parkinson, who was uh, uh, the youngest principal dancer ever at the Royal Ballet. She was oh. um, 
in, in the heyday of the Royal Ballet, oh, well, the first one of the heydays, I suppose, in the 70s. That's um, a name I don't know. Yes, yes with yes. Uh, she was um, very close with Kenneth McMillan. She was uh -huh. uh, worked closely with Sir Frederick Ashton, mm -hmm. um, and she Bershnikov brought her to ABT um, as a ballet mistress in the early 80s, and she became very much my second mother and mentor, and really helped um, shape and develop my uh, talent and my approach to my work. My husband, Victor Barbie, um, mm -hmm. of course, has been my husband for mm -hmm. over 20 years, but he was also very much um, a mentor and helping me um, develop my uh, approach to my work, mm -hmm. um, helping me navigate all the emotional territory mm -hmm. and uh, bringing my characters to life with um, mm -hmm. real depth. I mean, Victor is mm -hmm. an incredible actor, and so he had uh, so much to offer me as far as mm -hmm. um, how to create a really meaningful character that penetrates mm -hmm. um, into the uh, consciousness of the audience, and, and, and um, that's one of the things you're noted for. Well, yes, yes, yes yeah, um, I read that. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Kevin McKenzie, of course, as my artistic director for over 20 years, was a great mentor and mm -hmm. friend and coach, advisor. And um, there, I've had, I've had some. Natasha Makarova had a great mm. influence on me. <laughs> um, I've been very, very. Uh, privilege to work with so many incredible people that all nice. taught me something, gave me something, contributed um, to to my work and my mm -hmm. life and yeah. So yes. I guess that's why I love my art so much is really mm -hmm. because of the people that taught it to me. Oh, that's wonderfully interesting, yes. And uh, you know, I guess that would really um, truthfully apply to any profession, any art, the people that mentor you and help yes. you along. I've spoken a lot on the show about mentors and um, <clears throat> how you get mentors and and uh, years ago we didn't really have them but now uh, yes. <clears throat> they just seem to be able yes. to be cultivated and uh, yes yeah. I, I mean starting with Hortensia Fonseca who is who is the director of the Maryland Youth Ballet she's in her mid 90s now and yeah, she I... just from day one instilled this lifelong love of ballet. Mm -hmm. And it's just, she planted this seed um, that she planted not only in me, but in all of her students. And that seed was um, just nurtured and developed mm -hmm. and cultivated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, throughout my entire career, yeah. so. Yes. Give me, um, before we break, a couple of takeaways that what most you think you've taken away with you. You've said so many wonderful things about American Ballet Theater, but um, the main things that you think you're taking with you as you go into your new right. role as artistic director. Um, well, I, I think one thing is just that, that the love of the art form, mm -hmm. how much I love mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. will always love it um, because of what it has given me. And then the other thing that I really feel like is a, a really important thing that I share with my dancers and, and any students in, that I'm in front of is that artistic pursuit that I, I probably wasn't aware of how to articulate it until I am on this side of being the artist. But that, that embracing the idea that as an artist, you start each day and you build forward uh, trying to uh, just build on what you accomplished the day, the day before. Mm -hmm. And so, and you start over the next day and you start over the next day so that it's a lifelong understanding that you are pursuing something. Like, as Baryshnikov said in, in an address to um, a university, being better is so much more interesting than being the best. And I'm paraphrasing, but it's mm -hmm. that idea that the pursuit for excellence, that ongoing pursuit, is so much more interesting, gratifying, and enlightening and inspiring mm -hmm. than just sort of thinking you're just going to be at the top and there you are. Mm -hmm. But you just keep moving forward and you build on what you accomplished the day before 
and along that way, of course, you celebrate triumphs and and there's disappointments that need to be mm -hmm. handled and softened and um, but it's that beautiful artistic pursuit. Yes, yeah, and right. and that's I think if if I had been able to articulate and understand that in the midst of it, I probably would have been able to. Uh, I, I think I would have felt like a bit more um, aware of yes for those moments where you feel like I'm not there. Actually, you're, you're never going to be there because you're always aspiring for more. Mm -hmm. So just embrace that. Well, that's a wonderful um, uh, point yes. to transfer to your people here, right. to your young dancers, right. for all young dancers. I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, I think it's the fountain of youth, that idea that you're yeah. always moving forward. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm going to break. We'll come Good. back and talk more about your uh, pursuit here Great. Uh, for the new Washington Ballet. Great. We'll break for a short public service announcement. back to It's a Woman's World. We're speaking with Julie Kent, Artistic Director for the Washington Ballet. Julie, I want to concentrate now on the Washington Ballet and your aspirations for the mm -hmm. ballet and uh, your vision for the company. So tell us, what is your vision for the Washington Ballet? Well, um, our aspirations are um, to build the company um, to a level of distinction. Uh, that garners a national and international reputation um, that reflects the excellence that we um, expect in our nation's capital. Mm -hmm. Well, you're one of the few women leading mm -hmm. a ballet company, so um, it's quite an honor. And that's a, quite a large vision, and, and it sounds wonderful, because you did tell me that a number of um, most cities do have more of an international reputation. I didn't realize that we... Well, We're lacking, I guess, in, in that particular I, sense. I think that uh, cities like Boston, Houston, San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago, they have ballet companies that perform to live orchestra in an opera house, and those things are somewhat given, and they, they, they perform works that are performed in international repertoire. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, the difference is that the Washington Ballet, because it has grown in mm -hmm. the, our school is celebrating its 75th anniversary in the fall of 2019, mm -hmm. and our company oh. is is 40 years old, which um, is still actually relatively young, and it came out of the okay. company, and it's still on its way to really full maturity, um, and we all have in Washington the Kennedy Center, which brings in that caliber of uh, classical ballet uh, in the opera house with the orchestra. And so this is where um, I think the community has sort of looked to the Kennedy Center for supplying uh, the ballet uh, that, that ha meets yes. those criteria, when the Washington Ballet is still aspiring to have that kind of gravitas and be presented in an opera house with the orchestra, and there are certain givens that you would that you would like to have in a ballet company of distinction uh, oh, such see. as that. And so that's where we are. Where we are working towards that, and um, well, so basically, then you're working towards accomplishing this vision. Yes. And give me some of the steps. So how do you intend to accomplish? Well, this? my. My approach is, is very similar to how I uh, approached my own career and mm -hmm. what I spoke about with the art, artist's pursuit. You build. You build a foundation that you can then take the next step and the next step. And the foundation of a ballet company is its repertoire. Now, repertoire 
is very much like a collection in a museum. Mm -hmm. It's a big indicator of the museum, the caliber of the museum, what paintings it has in its collection. Oh, it has this, it has that, so, and so in just uh, by repertoire for a ballet company, you mean the different uh, dances that yes. you dance? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's like the catalog of what. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this company dances this, and so it's important to dance works that have been danced over hundreds of years because you can develop a standard of measure. If you can dance Giselle at a certain level, then you have reached a level of distinction or Swan Lake or Sleeping Beauty. There's certain criteria that in order to, or I suppose in an orchestra, there's certain very famous pieces of music that if you can play these pieces mm -hmm. of music, mm -hmm. uh, then you can then be considered uh, you can develop, start developing your reputation for distinction. It's the same with the ballet company. As well, it, it fuels the dancer's depth of knowledge. If you have an understanding, for example, our Russian master's program, which is highlighting four Russian choreographers who have contributed uh, to our art form, shaping it, influencing it, influencing it, and to world culture, Petipaf, Fokin, Balanchine, and Ratmansky, mm -hmm. you can see the progression of the art mm -hmm. form. And as an artist, you're developing your own understanding of your art, both uh, from many different mm -hmm. perspectives and also just physically. Mm -hmm. you, and then, so when you have the opportunity, for example, in March, we have th a program of three world premieres. When you're the muse, when somebody's asking you to create something, you have a much deeper base of knowledge to pull on in order to be, to speak with a real command of your art. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to build a repertoire see, that yeah. you can then move forward, move forward, move mm -hmm. forward, move forward. Um, I don't know if you've kind of answered this, but uh, I was going to ask about the creating a ballet company that sets standards and also, well, this maybe uh, go a little bit to the Washington community and, and inspires the interest and the curiosity of the Washington right. community. And so when, the com when our community comes to see uh, us, they can see right away mm -hmm oh, this is where the company is now. And then when you see the company dance Giselle or any, any of our works in two seasons, mm -hmm. oh, they're here now, they're here now, they're here now. And so you, the, the community rises and they're building also their understanding of the art form. Oh, I didn't realize that mm -hmm. uh, this was... Uh, that Fokin created Les Sophies and was inspired by Isidore Duncan, and it was, mm -hmm. and, and you're, you connect even just a few dots, mm -hmm. and then you you grow your knowledge base. So it's important for um, the dancer's knowledge, the the institutional knowledge, and the greater community knowledge, and to feel for our community of Washington D.C. to take ownership of this company in a much nice. larger way is very very important. That's wonderful, yes, because you're right, at Kennedy Center, uh, we get many wonderful companies from all over the world, really. Yes. But we don't necessarily have uh, one that we have built it, or watched grow. That's correct. Much, and so, so. That, that investment, that emotional investment, that sense of pride, mm -hmm. and Believe me, I love the companies that come to the yes. Kennedy Center. My very first performance was on the Kennedy Center stage with New York City Ballet uh -huh. uh, as a supernumerary in Capella, sharing the stage with Brzezhnikov and Patricia McBride. As a dancer with American Ballet Theater, I mm -hmm. came to the Kennedy Center every year, and I love Kennedy Center stage. Yeah, but there's room for, for there's plenty of room in the artistic uh, landscape here mm -hmm. to have both. And uh, that's what I really aspire to, mm -hmm. that our company can take its place where, uh, a pride of place, I suppose. Yeah, and watch the growth. And mm -hmm. I like that idea yes. very much. Yeah, and yeah. just enjoy the beauty, the beauty of the spectrum of, of uh, the choreography and mm -hmm. uh, uh, all the wonderful influences from around the world and um, 
it's very, it's very, very exciting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think you've answered many of my questions. Good. <laughs> <for us. laughs> uh, sharing your knowledge, and you had mentioned that I was reading that you said you felt an obligation to share that, and you've kind of you've touched on it already. Well, I so. think when you when you leave the stage, you become a steward or a protectorate of your art form, and. I, I, I've shared with you how much I love my art, not just because I love how it feels and I love to watch it and I love to dance it and I love the people that I danced with and I love the people that taught me the art. And so it's now my obligation to protect it I and see. to cultivate that same emphatic devotion to my art mm -hmm. to others mm -hmm. so that I can ensure that it will continue to thrive and it it will at the end of the day our our daily thought process is how can we make the most impactful and meaningful contribution to our community through our art mm -hmm. as a school in our community engagement and on the stage in our performances mm -hmm. and it's that kind of emphatic belief in your art form that really keeps it moving forward. Hmm. What surprises me most about what you're saying, I guess, is the fact that you really are educating and developing the interest of the community along with your company. I didn't realize that that had an overlap. I think it's marvelous. And so I can see now uh, where that could be some of the steps going toward an international status for a company. Yes. Yeah. I, I think uh, that kind of looking at the broad, I mean, also as a dancer, talking about takeaways from what I learned in my own work, mm -hmm. it's, there's a, a process of overarching, looking at the very big picture, and then there's the process of looking at the very fine details. And so you cannot live in either space. You have to live in both spaces. So looking at how we can contribute in a very broad way, uh, through our school, through our community engagement, through our performing company, and, and really use our art form to contribute uh, to our community. And then you zoom in, how do you actually do that? Yeah. And, and it's how, you, how, as a teacher, you instill that lifelong love of an art mm -hmm. form in our company, how you help the dancers as craft every single day, every hour, every rehearsal, working their their technique yes. to get the most out of it. And, and then in our outreach, how can we introduce, how can we expose and make accessible our art form to just open doors for people? Mm -hmm. That's just so wonderful. I answered a number of questions, developing a, a, a dancer and outreach and takeaways. Thank you so much. I, I wanted to ask them, um, what's the best way to appreciate a ballet? <laughs> well, um, it's a little difficult for me to answer because I, I, I've been watching ballet my whole life, and so it's such a natural thing for me. So perhaps uh, there are things that, to me, are a given. But I would say follow your instinct. I think some people are perhaps a bit intimidated because they feel mm -hmm. they don't have... Um, they can't articulate or don't know the language yes. of how to express what they're seeing and feeling. Um, and uh, I say don't be intimidated by that because generally your instincts are correct. You just watch and you take it in and if it makes you feel a certain way, you have ownership of those feelings. You, you can, you, 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 you can have a takeaway and an impression without knowing details about how to articulate that opinion. Yes. Um, and I think just exposing yourself to as much as possible, then you can you learn can learn. Exactly. Own, uh, oh, this ideas. dancer is this dancer has this these assets. This is their strengths and then this dancer oh but they I this is what I love about watching them and the same with choreography I think one of the things that that also we aspire to is that you you go to the, when you go to the Washington Ballet we want you to know that whatever you'll see it will be excellent you may not love every single piece just ah. like when you go to a concert you may not love 
every piece of music you hear. If you go to a museum, you're not going to love every piece of art on the wall. I but see. you expect that they are there for a reason. They're doing these, they, they have that collection of art in a museum for a reason. You, the, the music you're listening to is there because it should be a part of your musical knowledge. And when you go to the Washington Ballet, what you see on the stage is going to be on the stage because it should be part of the process. And of you may love learning as exactly, well as and you'll talking. love some of it, and I some know, of it right. may just you. think you leave you curious or figuring it out or contemplating or it's just not my thing. But then the next person, person next to you, I you know I love that. That's everything that yeah. I love about dance. So it's our own individual thoughts, yes. and feelings, and emotions that we bring are valid. Right? Yes, Wonderful. for sure. Yeah. And then I think the more you see, you, you'll be Julie. able to art articulate it and yeah. develop That's the it. language. So going to the ballet and attending is yes. what people should take yes. away. I think I right, would. You know, yeah. It would be yeah. wonderful to Thank have you. that. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed meeting our guest, Julie Ken, as much as I have, and that you're inspired to take in a ballet at one of the many venues in your area. Thank you for watching It's a Woman's World. I'm Carolyn Bruna. See you next time. Mm -hmm.